So, hello, Dan Green. Hi, I'm Dan Green from 4MS Company. We're here at NAMM 2024 to show you two new ways to sequence and control your modular system. We have here the Catalyst Sequencer, which is an eight-channel CV sequencer, which can be played with a clock, like a normal step sequencer, and it also can be played with a phase CV, um, which is super fun, and let me show you, you can just also scrub it with the slider, and we're going to dive into that. The other one we have is the Catalyst Controller. This is an eight channel CV macro controller. So you have eight CV outs that you run to different things in your modular. You create scenes of different voltage levels, and then you can cross fade between those scenes using the slider or different ways of automating and recording, and we're going to dive into that second. So first, let's start with the, the Catalyst Sequencer here. We have, um, a simple, you can plug a clock in or use the internal. Let me just start it off. Here we go. So here I have an eight step sequence, pretty basic on channels. Uh, let me turn down a little bit. Channels one and two we have here. I'm driving an ensemble oscillator, just eight different notes. Each one of these is a note. So here I can set my notes. And then I can also set a glide per, per step. hear that, and a variable amount of glide per step, then you also had, can set a channel to be gates. On channel two here, I have gates. You hear each note's firing, I can skip notes. I can also do multi-hits, right? And um, you can, uh, any channel can be CV or gates. So uh, here I have CV gates, and then on channel three, I have going on you see, this is also an eight-step sequence, but it's running uh, one-eighth the speed because I have a clock divider set on it. And this is controlling some of the effects, bringing them in and out. So I have maximum glide turned on all these steps. So it's just fading the, the warp and the, uh, the wet-dry of the delay in and out. Channel four also, same thing. So you can hear that. Now in channel five, I have something different going on. They're showing off, you can have sequences of different lengths. So here I have this bass kind of resonant, and it's just three step sequence, also with a clock divider of eight. So we're hearing kind of this kind of polyrhythm over that. It's being fired by these gates, which are also an eight step sequence, but only three are activated. So we get that rhythm through that, that kind of approach. Again, each channel has its own separate parameters, so you can layer all these things on top of each other. Here on the last two channels, I have, I'm firing some kind of percussive samples here. Um, also just selecting sample and, and firing triggers. They are running on a seven phase sequence. So there's a seven step sequence. So that's how we're getting those phase relationships there. So there's tons, tons more you can do with this, but I want to show you my absolute favorite part about it, which is, which is the phase CV. So this is what really makes this, let you go between the boundaries between lockstep clock phase sequencing, which is also super fun, and, well, complete chaos if you want. But you can fine tune in between those. So here's how it works. You can scrub, you can select any step in the sequence using the slider like that. You can also feed a CV into it. So let me just uh, play a little LFO in here. You can hear. So here I'm playing the first three steps. Now if I scrub a little bit, right, I can pick different parts of phase. If I change the speed, I can go faster. Now notice it's only three steps. If I change the amplitude, I could go just two, or I could go higher, four, five, six, seven, or eight. I can slow that down. Now if I change the wave shape, I could go, I could make it play backwards by doing a uh, ball only envelope, or I could go a triangle forward backwards or change the relationship of them. I could change the shape. So if I make it more uh, exponential, it bunches up at one end or the other, or more expo, right? Okay, so while you're doing all that, um, you can also use the clock. Let me go back to a simple, like, two-step sequence. Now I'm going to play the clock at the same time. So here's our 
our sequence as, as before, and if I just add in a little bit of phase, just get this jitter. Right, so just I just screwed up my whole sequence, right? And I can just put it right back by turning that bass CP off. I can also jump around in the sequence with this, so if, I, if I'm playing... Right, super playable. And so far, we've only been watching eight steps. That's the maximum step you've seen here, but you can go up to 64. You can also arrange your those 64 into pages. So I have, like, page two here is going to be... This is a different sequence that I just jumped to in time. I can jump back to the first one now. And you can make you can chain those together to make songs. And each channel can have its own song or you can use global songs. So it's super powerful. And there's tons of other things. There's quantization scales and uh, copy pasting and uh, randomization and uh, gate, gate pulse width and things like that. There's a lot more. But I want to show you the Catalyst controller next. So this is the Catalyst controller. You can see it's a similar layout. This is an eight-channel macro controller. And what a macro controller means is that you're controlling a lot of things in your modular with this one module. So you can take, um, let me get some sound going here. So like this channel one here, <clears throat> for instance, I have patched to the, the root. So I can transpose. So this is scene one I'm on. Now if I go to scene two, here I have, I'm going to turn up some uh, cross FM, and then I have it um, transposed down. Scene three, I have no transposition, but some cross FM, right? So I can I can set up different things. I'm also cross fading the uh, the drums here, so I can jump to scenes by pushing a button. I can also cross fade between scenes by moving the slider. Right in here, I have some slew set on the uh, slider. Let me turn that down better so I can just jump around or I could uh, I could put up to like a two minute lag on there so if I flip that across it's gonna fade slowly so you can go up to two minutes on that on that time um, you also can record your slider motions by recording the motion and then playing back using uh, using the just play pressing the play button or using triggers to play it back and when you trigger it, you can also set a clock divider on that, meaning you can loop in time with your clock and then set it to be a number of bars. So there's a lot of options for live performance, for live uh, uh, controlling multiple things and setting up presets, almost like a preset manager, also like a transition manager that you can transition between things. So again, there's tons more things, quantization, you can have gate outputs, you can set the amount of morphing. Uh, for each channel, there's uh, eight banks of, that you can access, and you can set path, this pathway that I set here of only three. You can set pathways up to 64 if you want. So tons of things. So, and I know what you're thinking right now. These all sound great, but which one should I get? Well, don't worry, because whichever one you get, you actually get both. Because if you get the sequencer, you hold down these three buttons, and it turns into a macro controller. Or if you get the macro controller, you hold down these three buttons and it turns into a sequencer. So you can try out the features if you want. And then, if you got the sequencer and it turns out you really liked the macro controller, you can take the faceplate off and flip it around and you have the macro controller. Wow, super. So this is our two-in-one concept. So we think you'll be happy, people will be pretty happy about that. They're both going to be available in eight weeks, actually less than eight weeks on March 19th, and they're 395 US. Brilliant. Cool, that's brilliant, Dan. Thank yeah, you very thanks. Much. We're super excited about them. It's it's opened up a lot of new possibilities for making new sounds, and we can't wait to hear what people do with them. Um, so there's also something else I can see uh, down there that looks maybe like a prototype, right? Yes, this is a this is a prototype. We have no official announcement. Um, it was it was leaked uh, in September, so we figured, well, everyone's seen it. It's all over the internet. We might as well have it here. It's no longer a secret, but um, I don't have any specific dates or prices or anything about that. Even even feature lists. Uh, we I can tell you that what it is is it's a player for patches. So you create patches, which a patch is multiple modules hooked up together, or one module, and then you assign mappings to knobs. So uh, 
I can show you like a basic a basic patch. So, so what are the modules? Are like the modules inside? The modules are inside here, right. yeah, they're running inside here. It's, it's not running VCV Rack, uh, though you can use VCV Rack to create patches on the computer, which is a great way to make a complex patch. Uh, then the modules inside here are, are running. In here, it's not a controller for your computer. See, it's not connected to a computer. You can connect MIDI. Uh, you, can, you can map things to a MIDI knob, but, uh, or to MIDI CC or MIDI notes, gates, and you can do MIDI polyphony, too. You can also uh, control mappings. Uh, one knob can control multiple knobs, for instance, and with different like min and max settings and things like that. The one thing that we're working on right now is adding more modules because that's been the feedback since it leaked. That's been the feedback that we got was that like it needs to have tons of modules. So we're adding more, and we're we're adding ways that people can run their modules on this without needing to like update the whole firmware. It's like a plug-in system. So, but all this is still in the works, and I can't give you tons of details about about it. Even the the UI is still uh, in progress and a little uh, still a little rough. So don't. Don't uh, be upset when you get the real thing and it looks a little bit different because it, we're still, it's still an early prototype. Brilliant, well Dan, thanks for talking us through the uh, Catalyst uh, series or, uh, yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, awesome, thanks for watching.